do you just want to introduce yourself and show us your home setup there this morning? Sure. So um, I'm Monica. I'm an artist here in Birmingham, but um, maybe you can tell from my accent. I'm actually originally from America, from California. So yeah, here we go. This is my studio here. And um, so I'm going to do some paintings here for you. I'm going to work at two at a time and you guys are going to choose which one you want to follow. And uh, maybe we can have a look at the list of materials for today. So today, let's see, we're going to use um, thick white plain white paper. So if you have some kind of um, heavy drawing paper or um, uh, watercolor paper or some kind of heavy card craft paper, that would be perfect because we're going to paint on it and we want it to stay nice and sturdy. A sheet of cardboard, we're going to use that as our, as our board to, to tape our paper down and work on. Uh, color paper, that's an option. You, um, you don't need it, but if you, there's some other little um, activities that you could do with it, if we've got some color paper. Masking tape, if you have it, scissors, pencil, marker. I've got paints, red, yellow, blue, and white, but if you have other colors, that's fine. You can improvise. Uh, paintbrush, glue stick, a paint mixing tray. I've just got a couple of, um, you know, takeaway food containers to mix my paints in. Some water to wash your brush and kitchen roll to dry your brush. Great, perfect. And if you don't have all of these materials, don't worry, just improvise with whatever you have in your in your homes um, and just get creative with whatever you have. So don't worry too much if you haven't got everything on this list. But if you need to go and gather some of these items quickly, I am just going to do a very quick introduction to Icon Gallery and the exhibition that we have on at the moment. So use this if you want as a bit of time to scurry away and gather any other materials that you want. Um, and uh, we just wanted to let you know that all of the things that we're making today are inspired by artworks in the gallery at the moment. So let me just show you a photograph of Icon Gallery. Um, you can also see, obviously, in my virtual background, the building. If you've not been to Icon Gallery before, um, we are a contemporary art gallery and we're based in Brinney Place in Birmingham City Centre. Um, and our building is very beautiful, as you can see there. Um, and in the building at the moment is an exhibition called Faster Than Ever. And it's called this because we had to put it together very quickly um, due to the current situation. Um, we usually change our exhibitions every three months, but plans, of course, have had to change. Um, so there at the moment is an exhibition of artworks that we've gathered and collected over time. Um, and we're really looking forward to opening this after lockdown and hopefully we can welcome you all in. Um, so in the exhibition, there are lots of different artworks by lots of different artists. And I'm just gonna quickly show you what the galleries look like inside at the moment. So Icon has two floors of gallery spaces, um, our first floor and second floor. In our first floor at the moment, there are lots of different films. Um, so you can see some of those here on display um, and you can watch some of these films through our website if you're interested. Um, here's another image. And in our second floor galleries, um, there are lots of different types of artworks. There's painting, more films, photographs, sculptures, things on the wall, things on the floor. Also on the second floor are the artworks that we're going to be inspired by today, including these two on the back wall. I think I might be able to zoom in a little bit here. Um, so we have one work by an artist called Timur Novikov, and it's this print of the little sailboats at sea. And next to it is a painting by an artist called Graham Gussin. Um, it's the white canvas. You, you might not be able to see, but there are little arrows painted on the canvas. And Monica is going to talk to you more about this um, and these works a little bit later. Um, and then in our uh, resource room, um, there's another work that we're going to be looking at today. It's on the one on the left hand side of the wall um, by artist Carmen Herrera, the, the red background with the white triangle. 
Um, and also on the back wall, I'm just going to highlight um, the piece which is by the window. Um, and you can just see the Library of Birmingham peeking through the window there. Um, it's a film work by an artist called Kate Gruby, um, who dresses up um, as different characters and performs. And it's a film work that you will be able to watch um, through our website next week if you're interested. So that's a little introduction um, and a little peek into what the gallery looks like at the moment. Um, so I'm going to completely hand over to Monica now, who's going to start us off with our creative activities for today. Um, I'm going to disappear for a little bit. Um, so Monica, I'm going to hand over to you uh, and I'll be back a little bit later. All right, don't go far because we're going to take a close look at the Timur Novikov painting. So. Yeah, we're going to work on, like I mentioned before, I'm going to do two paintings um, at a time so that there'll be one that's for all levels, as you can see here. This is anyone can do it, any age, any level. Oh, okay. So let's have a look at the Timor Novikov uh, screen print. And what do we see when we look at this? I see a little red sun that is rising over a blue sea. And there's a yellow sky behind it. And if I didn't know, if I didn't see the title, I wouldn't know, is it the sun setting or is the sun rising? But we can tell that the, the artist has written the title Sunrise Over the Sea. So it's definitely a sunrise, which means it's the start of a new day. And the, sun, uh, the sky is so yellow. And I think that's interesting because if you ever see the sunrise, you have early, uh, up early enough to see the sunrise, you see the sky change colors, don't you? Same with the sunset. So I think that's uh, an interesting thing. That's the one thing that's nice about winter, even though it can, it can be quite dark and, and, um, and short days. Sometimes though, the sun comes up a bit later. So sometimes you're awake on your way to school or you just happen to catch that sunrise, which is a nice thing. So then there's a little white boat. They're all alone on the sea. And I start to wonder who's on that little boat and how, what is he doing? Is he sitting there drinking his coffee, watching that sunrise? ready to take on the new day? Is he feeling very at peace and excited about the new day? Or do you think yesterday was a rough day at sea and he's sleeping in, he's tired, he wants a break, he's nervous about what's gonna to happen today? What do you think? I think, what, you know what, whatever kind of day he had the day before, today is a new day, the sun is rising and it actually kind of reminds me of, you know, Annie the musical when she sings, the sun will come out tomorrow. She says, when I'm stuck in a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick out my chin and grin and say, the sun will come out tomorrow. So here we go. So no matter what kind of day he had yesterday, he is ready for it today. So are we ready to get started painting? So we're gonna do two, I'm gonna do two different paintings and you're going to choose which one you want to follow. The one on the left is going to be for all ages. The one on the right for me, this is my right, <laughs> is going to be a challenge piece. So let me show you the two paintings. So we've got the all levels and the challenge. So the first thing you need to do is maybe grab your cardboard if you have your cardboard, grab your white paper, your canvas, and we're gonna tape it down along the edges. Okay, I'm gonna do mine on the board so you all can see. I've done one already, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape down the other one now. Everybody see okay? If you don't um, have the board or you're unable to tape it down, it's not a big deal. I like it because it makes a nice clean border around the edge. It's a nice final touch for when you finish your painting because it leaves a nice, beautiful frame around your artwork. Okay, so, and let's see, what do we need to do first? So I'm gonna bounce back and forth between the two, but again, you choose one to follow. You don't need to take it off. First thing I'm going to do actually is on the one on the left, I'm gonna paint the whole thing red. So I'm gonna get my red paint, get my little mixing tray, and the brush is ready on the side there. Okay. 
here we go. I'm gonna go paint this one all red. Be sure to really spread out that paint so you don't have thick lumps because we do want it to dry within the time that we're working. But again, if you if I go too fast, you can give uh, in the comments like slow down, please, or can you repeat that? And I will help you out as best I can. And then also, if you uh, are able to finish during this time, we'll try and uh, share the video with you guys later. You can always come back and, or if there's something that you didn't get to try, because I'm going to show you a couple other things that you can do as well. And again, if you don't have the exact materials, you can use whatever you want. You're the artist. That's the nice thing about being the artist. You get to make the creative decisions in the end, right? And improvise. We've said that a few times about improvise. What does that mean to improvise? It means to kind of make it up as you go. Find another solution if you aren't sure. You don't have the right material. So I'm smoothing it all out, getting rid of the lumps, spreading it all the way to the edge of the tape, going over the tape, and making sure there's no white left on my paper. Okay, so those of you eagerly waiting for the challenge piece, let's move over to that one. So this one, we need to let it dry before we do the next step. So we can just wait a minute there if you need to gather materials or go get something to drink. Now's a good time. This one, what we're going to do is we're going to start by choosing where our horizon is. If we look at the painting again, we see the horizon line where the sea meets the sky. So we're going to mark that off with our tape. my horizon right Boop. and then just like this one this is the sky the background the first layer the underpainting we're going to do our sky all red okay and you might be thinking why are we doing it red the sky is yellow because what we're going to do is we're going to eventually mask over it with tape and then paint in the sky over it so actually what ends up being red is just that sun okay but we start by doing the underpainting of red so go ahead and get your red brush and let's paint it in all the way to the tape stop when you get to the tape it's okay if you go over the tape and make it again thin out that uh, paint so that you don't have any lumps because if we have lumps it takes longer to dry and really wipe it out and no white of the page try to cover up all those little white dots and it's okay to go over the tape Okay, so in the end, we should have a nice red sky. Okay, so once you've got your red sky painted in, what we're going to do is make the little boat. And the way I did that, we're going to mask it off. And then when we paint our ocean over, we're going to put tape down, make a little boat, and we're going to paint our ocean over it. And when the ocean is dry, we're going to pull the tape off and you'll have a nice little white boat. So, go ahead. I've got my masking tape. I'm going to cut, what do we see? The boat is made up of a couple of shapes. Can you see? We've got a triangle for the sail, a half circle for the boat shape. And I cut a little bit of tape to kind of make that little bar that's holding the flag, the sail. So. Here's my sail. If you don't have masking tape and you're thinking, how am I supposed to use that masking tape? Another option is to make a collage. If you have colored paper, or if you have any scrap paper, magazines, adverts, anything that you can use to collage. So one option is what I've done here, I'll show you a couple collages I did with color paper. This one, you see, I started with a yellow, yellow paper and I just cut out the shapes of the sun, 
it's raised. I've cut out half, I went down the middle of a blue piece of paper for the C, cut that in half, and then cut out the little shapes for the, the bow. So that's another option. Put that there for you. As a reminder. And for the challenge piece, I've done a similar thing as well, where I cut out the shape of the sun with paper, collage it together with my glue stick, and actually, well, I made the, the sailboat with some tape, but what are, what's another way? If you didn't have tape, you could, you could draw it on there, couldn't you? Or use yellow paper or another color paper. Let's put this back into this. Maybe I will stick this one over here. I don't know if you can see it. Those are some other things you could do. Okay, how are we looking? Now, if yours is taking a long time to dry, you could also, if you had an adult to help you, you could get a blow dryer and dry it. And, oops. Otherwise, let's see, mine is. Oh, Mine is pretty dry, so I think I'm going to go ahead and continue with this one on the left, okay? So this is, uh, again, the all levels piece. And so the next step is to put our sun in the middle. And the way I'm going to do that is by outlining a circle with my tape. Again, if you don't have a roll of masking tape, you need to find something that's a circle that you could trace, which is a cup. Got a little cup here. I could trace that if I didn't have water in it. I've got a lid. It's a circle. I could trace that. Got my pencil and I'm going to go right in the middle of the paper and trace. Okay. So the next step is to create the sun rays. Let's look again at the piece that we're making and how we're making those sun rays with our tape. Again, if you don't have tape, you could cut out shapes and glue them on. Like I've done on the collage above. We'll make nice long rays. And I'm going to go all the way around my circle and fill up this paper with rays, sun rays. And while I'm doing this, if you're working on the challenge and it's dry, the next thing you could do is to start to cut the little shapes for the sun. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Painting tapes all over the house. They're starting to fall. What we're going to do once we get all these sun rays taped in, we're going to paint over the whole thing with our yellow to make the sky. And then you'll see when the yellow dries, we're gonna remove the tape. Right, so continue working on that. I'm gonna come back to this. I wanna get you guys started over here. If your sky is dry, my hand is pretty dry. Okay, I've got lots of nice rays. I think I'll put one more long one right through the middle of the circle. How's everybody doing? Is doing okay? There we go. Now I'm just 
And I look very carefully at my son. I've covered up the whole thing with tape. So my son is completely, my circle should be completely hidden by the tape. However, I see a couple of spots where I still see a little bit of the sun peeking through. I see a little bit of my pencil line. So I'm gonna take a little bit of tape. I've got all these little bits and I'm going to just go around there and cover up so that all of my circle is hidden behind the tape, okay? So make a nice round. In the end, it'll make a nice round. So, just, so that's how I've finished that one. How are we doing over here? I'm gonna try again putting my sun down. I'm gonna move it all the way to the one dry. Okay. And if we cut the rays, we're gonna need little rays. So little rectangles. Should I show you again where we're at? So I'm making the sun a little round shape. I'm masking it out with my tape. And then I'm gonna cut a few rectangles for the rays. I'm getting lots of little scraps of tape. Don't throw those away. You know what you could do with those? You could make a, an abstract painting with them. You could put them if you've got extra white paper, stick all your little scraps on an extra white paper. Maybe I'll do that just for fun on the side and then paint over them. Just for fun, I think here's what I was going to grab an extra piece of that paper. Just because I've got lots of little scraps of tape now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting lots of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill them on an extra piece of white paper, put them all over the paper, and then we can paint over them and just make a really fun abstract. Artists save everything, don't they? <laughs> there. I'm just going to set that aside for now. That is a bonus one. Oh, my little bit. Okay, so next step. You ready? We're going to paint the yellow sky on both of these paintings, okay? So I've got another, actually, I can use the same tub. And get my yellow paint. And because my yellow paint is a little bit see-through, it's a little bit translucent, I'm gonna mix it with some white to make it nice and opaque, nice and dark. So you don't see my red through it. So I'll show you if I just paint, if I just paint with my yellow paint, let me show you. You can't really see it very well. So I'm gonna mix it with white. And if you don't have yellow, you don't have white, but you have something else you want to use, by all means, use whatever you have. I've got a little bit of red in my brush. It's mixing with the paint. That's fine. That just means it's going to turn a little bit orange, which is perfectly fine. So again, it's up to you. If you like. Okay, so it kind of looks like mustard now. Egg salad, egg salad sandwich. It looks like egg salad sandwich. Now, painting over the whole thing, both of you, both paintings can do this next step, right? You've got your yellow and your white mixed or whatever you're using and just paint right over your tape that you made, okay? And fill that sky with the yellow paint.
Taking all the way to the edges again, up to the tape, covering up all my tape. Everything is disappearing. Everything's turning yellow. Smoothing out any lumpies so it will dry faster. And I can still see some red coming through. That's fine. It's up to you what you like. I kind of like seeing a bit of the red through, but it's up to you. If you want to make it, you can wait for it to dry. Do another layer if you want to get rid of all that red. Make it solid. If you want a lighter yellow, you can add more white to it. If you want it to be more of an orangey yellow, you can add some more red to it. So I'm going a little bit quick here. But that's okay, smoothing it out. Goodbye, sun. Okay, now we have to, again, wait for it to dry before we go on to the next steps for both of them. So I thought while we wait for that to dry, again, if anybody needs to go stretch, have a snack, get some water, go for it now. But maybe we can have a look at the couple of the other paintings that are in the exhibition. Great, so this is a, this is a painting by Carmen Herrera. Carmen Herrera was, uh, she's originally from Cuba, but she lived in um, France, and the USA and she settled in New York. She studied architecture. So I think she's quite interested in these shapes, these very geometric shapes. So this looks quite simple, doesn't it? I think, oh, that's easy, I could do that. And I guarantee that you could, but just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's not important, right? So let's have a look and have a, a think, just like we do with Timur Novikov's painting. What do we think it's about or what do we see? So again, we see a white triangle on a red background, don't we? But it could be, it could be many things. Now she studied architecture, so she liked buildings. So maybe, you know, it kind of reminds me of is a spire on a cathedral or a skyscraper. Have you ever seen the, you can raise your hand, have you ever seen the, um, the shard in London? That very, um, what do you call it? Triangle, uh, <laughs> what's the shape I'm thinking of? Um, pyramid kind of style, right? So it's a very sharp triangle shape. Um, it also reminds me of a tree, a little tree, like a Christmas tree, or maybe it's an arrow pointing up. Well, why would she point up? Let's look up. What do we see? Well, we're inside. I see my ceiling and my light, right? But if I'm outside and I look up on a nice day, I might see the sky and some clouds. I might see some birds flying over my head. I might see the tree tops dancing in the wind. Right. So I, I kind of like that this painting is a little bit of a reminder for us to just look up, stop what you're doing and look up. And I don't know about you, but during this past year while we were in lockdown, I spent a lot of time just laying in the grass, looking up. And it's actually quite calming, isn't it? It's quite peaceful, just like that little boat on the water. It's quite peaceful. Right. So that's, that's what I think about that painting, but I would love to know what other people think. Let's look at Graham Gusson's painting. So this painting by Graham Gusson, now we saw it in the gallery and we saw it from a distance, right? So it just kind of looked like little tiny dots, like ants on the canvas. But if you get up close to his painting, you can see that they're actually little arrows and the little arrows are pointing different directions. Some are going to the right, some are going to the left. So it's almost a bit confusing. It's like, which way should I go? Should I go that way? I, go that? I don't know what these arrows are telling me to do. So maybe it makes you feel a bit, you make, uh, it makes you feel a bit lost or unsure, right? But if we look at Carmen Herrera's again, she's saying, don't worry about it. Doesn't matter. Just stop and look up. <laughs> um, the other thing I like about the Graham's painting is that because like I said, you have to come up close to it to really see those arrows. It makes me think of this, the old saying, stop and smell the roses, doesn't it? Have you ever heard that before? Because it forces you to stop what you're doing and come real close and look at those tiny little details. So that's quite nice. So I'm gonna show you a couple 
collages that you could do. Yeah, over here. So here's a, this is inspired by Graham Besson's painting. I just cut out, you can see lots of little triangles and rectangles. <laughs> the confusion of Graham's painting, right? That the arrows are going all different directions. We don't know which way to go. But then you could follow up with this one that says, doesn't matter, don't need to go anywhere, just stop, look up. And so I've actually inspired, I was inspired by uh, Carmen Herrera's, I made my little arrow that is kind of a tree as well. And I also give a little grass. So it's kind of like, stop, lay down on the grass, look up at the trees, look up at the sky. So what do you think? Shall we go back and see how our paintings are going? Mine is still a little bit wet there. And that one's a little bit wet as well. Uh, let's have a look. I think it's, it'll be okay. Just sneak into the next step. We'll just sneak into it. Okay, so next step for the, the one on the left, let's start peeling that tape off, okay? Because one of my favorite things to do, <laughs> peeling tape off. Ooh, there we go. There's our red sun. What is that? Working for you. Oh, look at that bright red sun. Is that how yours looks? And then the next step for this one, you have a couple options. What I'm going to do, I'll show you the last one. I'm going to cut a piece of blue paper for my C. And the way I did that was I folded the paper long ways and then cut it. And then I'm gonna glue it in the center like that. That's gonna be my C. But because my tape makes my page a little bit shorter, I'm gonna cut if I line up that paper just in the edge of the tape right there, so it sits nice and neat inside the tape, it goes over the edge of the tape on this side. So you see that? So I'm gonna cut some of that off so it fits nice and neat in my page. My paint's a little wet, so it holds the paper for me. Okay, and those of you that are on the challenge piece. If it's dry enough, you're ready to do it. You can both peel off the horizon and peel off, peel off the sun shape, okay? So I'll let you go ahead and do that while I put my blue seed. If you don't have blue paper, you could also paint in the ocean. If this is dry, you could paint in the ocean. Or you could leave it just like that if you like your nice big sun, just like it is. That's also fine. And then my, oh, I guess I got the paint from when I laid it down. Excuse my other piece. So I'm taking my glue and I'm gluing the back. Line it up inside the tape. Okay. Now you've got the sun rising over the sea. And then what's the last thing you need to do? You make your little boat. And you can do that by cutting out a triangle and a circle, cutting it out. I'm just gonna steal this one because I can't do one. You're gonna cut those out and put it on your painting. Going back to the challenge piece, I'm gonna take off my sun. I'm probably waiting on that. Take off my sun. Take off my sun. And then if the if your yellow paint is dry enough, we're going to put the tape back across the horizon and paint in the ocean, but we have to move that tape up a little bit. So I'll 
I'll show you what I mean. Mine's a little bit wet, so I'm a little bit nervous about putting tape over it. But... So we go like this to make a line on the other side, okay? Because that's going to be the edge of our water. We don't want to cross that edge. So now we're going to paint this whole part blue and you can do a dark blue or if you want to mix white with it make a light blue paint is making poopy noises wash out your brush very well because i don't my brush is still has um red and yellow in it if we don't wash it out we're going to end up with a green ocean which you know that's okay too or a brown ocean all the colors mix up so, washing out my brush, nice and clear. I'm gonna this time, because I the last one I did, I did just blue, nice dark blue. Just to do something a little bit different, I'm gonna mix a little bit of white in it, make it a little bit of a lighter blue, but again, totally up to you. Oh, my paint, you see my paint is a little bit wet, so my tape is falling off. So. And again, go right over your sailboat and go all the way up to the edges of your paper. Fill up the white space. Oh, you see what happens to the tape. It doesn't stick out. It's okay. I can paint over that when it's dry. The nice thing about acrylic is when it's dry, if you do mess up, you go over something, make a mark you didn't need to do. You can wait for it to dry and paint over. You can touch it up. Because I made a little blue when my tape came off right now. But I'm gonna fix it when I'm finished. Okay, so when this is dry, you can remove your little boat, you can remove your tape. And of course, the final touch is to take the tape off the edges, which is one of my favorite things. You think you like it? I would love to see your guys' paintings when you finish. So we're going to show you in the end a way to share them if you would like. Again, I remember I kind of I blooped, I blooped there. So I'm going to touch it up with some paint. I actually have a little brush here. Grab my red. Oh, I'm going to end up with a purple somewhere. I will fix this later. <laughs> it's all turning colors now. You can see the one that didn't bloop, and that was this one. That's how it looks in the end. So when you are able to pull, when this is dry, you're able to lift that um, tape off. You'll have a nice little white boat there. I'm a little wet, but I can try. Oh, so we're about finished with my demonstrations for you guys today. And we have about uh, about 15 minutes left. Really, maybe I, I could take questions or if anybody wants me to repeat something or show something. I'm gonna fix my little son, don't worry. But here's um some of the other ones. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one, the abstract piece, huh? So last thing I could do, I've got all this leftover paint. But if I just paint over a little bit. And when it's dry, I'll remove all these little pieces of paper and I'll have a really cool abstract painting. Get my red. Some leftover red, I'm going to mix it with my blue because that's just going to make it purple. I actually have some white, so I'm going to mix some white with it. I'm going crazy, guys.
All right, so that's my bonus abstract piece. When that dries, I will pull off the tape. So we've got several things that we've done today. We've done the painting here, a bit of collage, if you wanted to do a collage and a combination. So maybe I'll turn it back to Carrie to see if there's any questions from anybody. Hello. <laughs> That was absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Monica. Um, yeah, we'd love to see some of your photographs. Um, so I'm going to tell you in just a moment how you might be able to send some of those to us. Obviously, we can't see you today, which is a shame. We can't see you being creative in your homes. But if you want to send us in some photographs, as I say, we'll, uh, we'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But Monica, before we do that, I don't know yeah. if you... Um, we haven't had any questions through just yet. If anyone wants to ask Monica a question, feel free. Um, or if anybody just wants to, um, you know, just give us any feedback. Uh, tell us how you enjoyed the session. You can uh, pop that in the chat if you want. Um, just had, uh, oh, we have a question for you actually, Monica. Okay. Uh, from Aveline. Who is your favorite artist? Oh my gosh, that's a tough question. There's so many artists out there that I love, but I'll tell you one of my earliest favorites was Richard Diebenkorn and his abstract landscapes. I absolutely love those. So um, this has been a good activity for you today then, inspired by landscapes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, there's another one. One, where are you, Monica? And another, how did you become an artist? Oh, great questions. Um, I'm in Birmingham. And um, how I became an artist was from a very young age. I remember being in kindergarten and knowing I either wanted to be an artist or a teacher. And here I am <laughs> doing a little of both, so that's cool. And the other thing is my aunt was an artist. She's a, a portrait artist. And I used to spend my weekends in her studio and learning how to paint from life, so. Yes, she inspired me to become an artist. That's great. And you've had to make a studio in your home at the moment. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope all of you have managed to find creative spaces in your homes as well that you can turn into your little icon, or not icon, but it may be icon inspired studios, but art studios. Um, and um, Someone wants you to know that they also want to become an artist. Um, oh, that's and awesome. Good. Um, and Monica, there's another question here. Has Birmingham inspired you? Absolutely. I think Birmingham is a really cool city. And actually there's a lot, even though it's so different from California, there actually is a lot of things that remind me of where I grew up. So I'm originally from Sacramento and there's something about the city that reminds me a lot of Sacramento. And what I like about it is this really mashup of urban and there's lots of beautiful green spaces, old trees. And I love the canals where there's graffiti, but there's also birds and trees. And yeah, it's a cool city. I do like it a lot. It is a great city. Um, and yes, hopefully we can welcome everyone back into the city soon um, and you can come and uh, visit the gallery. Um, Arlo is asking, what do you make artwork about, Monica? Oh, wow. Um, great question. My, the paintings I do for myself for fun is um, right now I'm really inspired by trees, but I like abstract paintings. So I like playing and experimenting like that last one we did, just kind of having fun and trying things out. But I also like looking at trees and nature and looking at the colors that are that we see and the textures that we see. So I find nature really inspiring, but kind of mixing that abstract and nature. That's great. And we're getting lots of thank yous through, which is lovely. Um, I think it sounds like you've all really enjoyed the workshop today, which is great. Um, we're going to tell you how you can um, share your photographs with us. Just before we do that, we had one more slide, didn't we, Monica, on our PowerPoint, which yep. just to come back to this idea that the sun is going to come out again tomorrow. Um, yep. Shall I share my screen and you can talk about that slide? Yeah. Right, so I was talking about how Timur Novikov's painting, about the sun rising, that it inspires me to think about that, you know what, no matter what happened today, tomorrow is a new day. So no matter how you're feeling today, tomorrow could be better. It's a new chance, right? So 
Annie sings in the song tomorrow, when I'm stuck in a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick out my chin and grin and say, sun will come out tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow, come what may. And so I think what might be nice is if you guys wanna share your works as well, kind of you could put your paintings in the window and here you go, there's some of my paintings in my window. To maybe, you know, if anyone's already, maybe you put your hand up if you've got rainbows in your window to cheer up your neighbors and your friends, anyone passing by that's feeling lonely, feeling afraid, they see the rainbows, it brightens their day, right? Maybe our artworks with our sunrises could be a reminder to the people passing by that don't worry, whatever happened today, tomorrow is gonna be another day, right? Definitely. And if you wanted to, your parents, if you have social media, you're welcome to share your artworks using the hashtag Icon Gallery so we can see what you've done. I would love to see what everyone's done. Yeah. And if anybody wants to email us their photographs as well, you can do so by emailing learning at icon-gallery.org. And what we'll do next week is we'll compile a little Instagram gallery of all your creations. Um, so if you want uh, to have your artwork featured on our Instagram page, um, then send us an email and we'll do that next week. Um, but yes, we hope you can cheer everybody passing by your house up with all of your artworks that you've created today um, and carry on, you know, carry on. It's not a the weather's not that nice today. So today is almost the perfect day for um, being <laughs> arty in your home. So carry on this afternoon. Um, and if you're looking for more ideas for creative activities, um, we have lots of suggestions on our website. So if you go to www.icon-gallery.org, um, in the learning section of the website, there's a families page and there are family activities to try at home. And on there you'll find activity packs inspired by artworks that we have on display at the gallery at the moment. And also links to our YouTube page where you'll find lots of little follow along videos, um, which will hopefully kind of spark some ideas for uh, getting creative at home. And there was another question about um, how often we do these. Well, we're really hoping to um, continue with our live workshops. So keep your eyes peeled for the next one. Um, you can join our mailing list and we always send out um, information about when our live events are going to be via our emailing list. But just keep an eye on our website, on our social media, um, and um, you should hopefully see information about uh, when the next live workshop is going to be soon. So I think we are just about finished for today. Monica, anything, any sort of final closing words from you? <laughs> Yeah, actually, are you able to see me again? Or is it on my screen? I've put up all, <laughs> all the ones I've done, but let's have a look at, do we have just how much time? Oh, yeah, we've got five minutes. All right, let's have a look at the abstract one. Did any, if anybody had to go with this. Peel off some of these. <laughs> I'll, I'll put all these up to you in hashtag icon gallery. You can see how they look. But thank you so much. I had so much fun with you guys today. And I, I hope to see that you guys had a good time as well. And I know Monica can't hear you, um, but from your homes, if you just want to give Monica a little round of applause from where you are, um, we'll send that virtually to Monica. <laughs> um, so I think all that's left to do is for us to say goodbye. We hope you enjoyed the session and we hope you have a good day. So yeah, take care. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you again, Thanks Monica. Everyone. We'll oh. see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.